What's going on guys, Scony Life here and we're gonna bring you another video. We're gonna show you how to do the scuff controller and also the adapter for the headset. Uh, I am Scony Life and my other video that you have seen, we did a scuff taken apart and you may have seen the guy I'm about to introduce. Uh, right here, you can see him. This is his pet monkey, Nicholas Hartman. He's the main technician that has helped solve our issues with the Xbox One. Uh, we're gonna show you a couple of things here. I'm gonna actually flip around the camera here in a second. Actually, I'm gonna pause it. All right, so I'm gonna show you the tools that you're gonna you're gonna need in order to break down. I'm gonna show you the tools that you need to scuff, and the tools that you need in order to make the adapter for the headset. First off, uh, if you've ever taken a controller apart, you know that you need a T85. Um, so have a handy T85 screwdriver. Um, there are smaller T6 bits inside the actual controller, so you can get a nice little kit like this. A uh, pair of tweezers are helpful for putting the screws back into the holes. You're going to need uh, what they call uh, wrapping wire. It's just real small gauge. It's uh, This one is 30 gauge. And that's going to be what you can use to actual the buttons to the back of the controller. You need a solder, uh, soldering iron. 30 watts is fine. You don't need it, but flux is definitely helpful. It's not very affordable either. Um, and something to apply it with. I just use Q-tips. You're going to need some solder. Toothpicks. Your wet sponge, obviously, for your soldering, soldering iron. And then a hot glue gun. <clears throat> You're also going to need a nice sharp edge, maybe a razor blade or an X-Acto knife. That's what we're using. That does it for the tools. All right, so this is just something that I have laying around. I'm going to use it to take apart the back of the controller. Um, as you can see, I've already got one side off. We're gonna take the other part side apart. Um, it's pretty rigid, um, pretty durable, so you hear the popping. It's not breaking. It's just uh, popping out of the little ports. There's yeah, eight of those fine. little clips. So if one breaks off when you do that, no biggie. All right, so we got it open. We're gonna take apart our uh, controller now. If you ever taken a 360 controller apart, you'll notice that. Or on the 360 controller, the buttons and everything on the front will just pop out as soon as you have all the screws out. In this one, they're secured to the inside of the controller. That front face plate is actually uh, interchangeable and just pops right off. Makes for some easy customization on these controllers. Alright, so we've got all five screws now. As you see, this front plate just pops right off, and all my shit didn't fall out. Take the back off, and now we've got the inside of the controller. Get those screws. We're going to go ahead and set this aside for now. <clears throat> uh, one other tool that I did forget that you are going to need is a drill. as well as some sanding paper to make the edges nice and smooth. All right, so now that we got this opened up, we're gonna go ahead and pop off our joysticks just because they're in the way and uh, they don't really matter right now. Get our soldering iron turned on. And what we're gonna do is, we've got the rumble packs down here and they're soldering in, they're not plug and play like uh, the 360 controller. So you can see the soldering points on here. We're gonna go ahead and when that heats up, we're gonna take those off to because uh, this board will not come out unless these are taken off. Now, the next part of taking the controller apart is the bumpers up top. They pop right off right. Yeah, pop right off nice and easy. And you can see your triggers have a little more movement now. All right, so while we're finishing letting the soldering iron get hot, we're going to go ahead and open these up. Like I said, these seem to be about a, a T6. And there are one, two, for this backboard. And those are the first ones we're going to go ahead and take off. All right, at this point, our soldering iron should be hot enough. So we're going to go ahead and uh, tin the tip real quick. Mm 
And like I was talking about that flux earlier, what flux does is uh, helps conduct the heat and localize it so we don't have to keep your uh, soldering iron on there as long, which prevents, uh, reduces the chance of damaging your board. Go ahead and remove it now. Now, when you're taking off the wires, make sure that you take note of like the black ones on top and the gray ones on bottom. Also take note that the actual weights on them are different, so which one goes to which side. Okay. Yeah, you can take your uh, rumble packs out completely, um, the controller still works just fine, but the big one goes on the left side where you're not worried about your precision aiming. I'm going to go ahead and take off the second one now. On this one, the gray one's on top and the black one's on bottom. And just like that, our rumble packs are out. Set those aside, we don't need those for now. Um, you see these other two wires? These ones are not vital to remove, but I'm going to because I don't want to have to take off this tape and unwind it because I like how nicely wrapped it is right now. So we're going to go ahead and take off those as well. Use a little bit more flux. <clears throat> Gray's on the inside, black's on the outside, and that's like that for both of them. Alright, so the next part is actually taking the, uh, the circuit board off of this one. And what it does is right here underneath my finger, there's a clip into the board, as well as one over here on this side. Pops right off, and you can see where it clips in into those. We're going to go ahead and set this aside. Alright, as we can start to see our contacts for our actual buttons, this is going to be the B. As you can see in the front, B moves this one, which means this right here is your B circuitry. This is what we're going to go ahead and solder into uh, for the back of our controller. We're going to get to that in a minute after we take off this front board. There are a total of six screws on this one. I set them in a nice secure spot again. The lid to my little uh, multi screwdriver works just perfectly. So now we have it all taken apart, or all the screws taken out. We're going to go ahead and take this out. Now this can be real fickle as it's real tight up here. And this is where your infrareds are as well, so you really don't want to. All right, so this, can, this is where the infrareds are, so you don't want to be too rough on it right under here. But we're going to go ahead and uh, bring it up a little bit and wiggle out. And there we have it. There's your other circuit card. Now, you know your layout, two controllers. B is right here, which means A is right here. These are the two that we're going to solder into for this video. B is your drop shot and your slide in Call of Duty. A is your jump right here. You see these black parts on the top and bottom? These are what we're going to solder into just the very outside of it. Now this black that you see in there, which I'm pretty sure is graphite, is <clears throat> very fragile. You do not want to slice across it anywhere but where we have to because that can prevent it from closing the circuit and actually activating the button. We actually learned this from experience. <laughs> With Sconey Life's controller, he scraped too much, and I had to repair it. Now it is very, very, very difficult to repair this stuff. So I will make another video at a later time to show you how to makeshift repair it so that way it will still work. Start on the scraping. Alright, so we've got our X-Acto knife. 
Now, I'm using a wide blade, but it really does not matter what you use. You just need the very fine point of the tip right here. So we're going to come down here to this black contact. We're just going to scrape just the top of it until we can see just a little bit of the silver underneath it. Copper. Yeah, it's copper, but it looks silver. And while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and scrape the bottom as well. Alright, so as you can see, you've got just a bit of uh, shine right there and right there. This is what we're going to go ahead and solder to. Now, I'm an avid user of Flux because it prevents the use of excess heat and damaging the board. It also localizes your heat so you don't have to press there as long. What you do is you, I apply the flux there. Go ahead and make sure your uh, tip to your soldering iron is nice and tinned so that way your uh, solder move flow is nice and easy. Get the solder on there and we're going to apply it here. Now I'm not going to waste the next three minutes showing you how to do this because it's very slow. You don't want to rush through this. I'll resume this in a minute when I have it on there. Alright, just to show you the scraping off, you'll need a little bit. Now, the side on the right is a little bit longer than I meant for it to be, but the one on the left is perfect. Uh, what you, you want to avoid cutting off any direct contact, um, so you just want to do a corner of it, and then after you get some solder on it, and it doesn't take a lot of solder, after you get some solder on it, they can zoom. That's what it'll look like, just a little bit of solder on it. And next I'm going to put the wire onto it. Alright, so we've got our wire here. And you don't need a lot of the actual copper in the wire showing. But what you want to do is tin that wire, which means put a little bit of uh, solder onto it. And then we're going to attach it facing the outside of the board. For both of them. Alright, so I've got the two wires on our A button now. I just want to show you that although you want it to look pretty, um, it doesn't really matter as much right here. Um, as long as it makes good contact, it's not going to fall off real easy. As you can see, you give it just a little tug because there's not going to be anything pulling on it once you have the controller put together. You do want it to be outside so you see the whole circle. If you visualize it in your head, that contact's going to press down. It's not going to have any problem with where the solder's at. But you don't want big globs on there, and it doesn't take a lot. Now we've got the wires put on the other one. There you go. And there you go. So we got the two screws back in there. We've got our wires on the side. So I kept the top one up here. Is going to be for my B button and the bottom ones are for my A button. So now we're going to go ahead and put our uh, actual triggers back in here, right here. And if you remember, they go to a specific spot and it matters because if you reverse, uh, they're not going to work. We can also put the rumble packs in now, or you can leave them off. It does not prevent the controller from working properly. Um, I personally like having them because you can disable it in-game. So I'm going to put those back on as well. Alright, so we've got our rumble packs back on. And we have our blue, blue wires waiting. And we have our trigger rumble packs back on as well. So next up, we are going to put our bumpers back on alright so those are good alright so next up we have to drill our holes in the back of our controller now this isn't an exact measurement kind of thing this is how it feels for you so when I'm holding it, I see where my fingers are. This is where I want it to be. Because that's where it's going to be for me. 
Either you're going to press the button in, or you're going to pull it down, or whatever. The way we're doing this, you know, basically they'll end up working like triggers. Um, but I'll see where they are, and then I will make a mark, and then I will drill through the controller. So I will show you back in a second. Alright, so after making, after feeling it, making a mark, I've gone ahead and I've drilled my holes. Um, now this isn't the final size of the hole, but I got it started so that way I could make sure that it was where I wanted, so I can still alter it a little bit if when I make it bigger. So we've got our buttons, and basically what you want is, uh, they're called momentary tack switches. Normally open. And yes, uh, that is a key part. You don't want it closed when it's not being pressed. You want it uh, normal condition open. And as you can see with this one, I can press it straight in, I can press it to the side, and it still makes contact. And that, that's good because you don't, if it's not exactly where you want it in the back of the controller, you don't want to have to just press it in. Like I said, it can be used as a trigger in a way. So we're going to take the size of this, compare it, and see, okay, the entire top round part has to fit through it. Well, that's too small, so we're going to have to go ahead and open up the hole or get a bigger drill bit. Now, I don't have the bigger drill bit with me, so I'm going to go ahead and use this to just open it up a little bit more. All right, so we've got the holes made. Yeah, these are not perfect circles because I didn't have the right drill bit. I just opened it up. Afterwards, take a little bit of uh, sandpaper, make it, uh, roll it up, and put it in there and smooth it out. Um, the key part is to make sure that these fit through there. Like I said, just the top part needs to fit through. The bottom part is going to get glued into there. As you can see, that's where it's going to sit. All right, next up is gluing it in there. So, and yes, you want to use hot glue. You do not want to use super glue or uh, epoxy because if it gets in there and it touches the white part of this button or anywhere in the cap, it's going to prevent it from uh, pressing properly. So we're going to get in there, get it set, make sure it's where we want it. And from there, we are going to glue it. Got them glued in there, and uh, the glue is almost completely set. You want to make sure that they're they're centered and pretty even. Um, make sure that they work. Pressing in on them. Now I press down on them, so when I use mine so I make sure that it works that way as well. Alright so next up is going to be putting the controller uh, or rather soldering it in and the way you typically want it is this is your precision side. Alright so the right side you want to be your drop shot. Drop shot is B so this one is going to be your B. Controller goes to weight this way so this is B side. We got our B one which is our top these pair are going to get soldered over to this side. Now the important thing is to figure out on your uh, on your buttons the opposite sides. Now for these ones, but it's long ways this way. So I want to go. I can go cross, like do opposite corners um, for each side. It doesn't matter which one's positive, which one's negative, just as long as they go to opposite sides of the actual gate inside the trigger. So we're going to do opposite corners because that's your safest bet because opposite corners are never going to be the same thing. Alright, so we've got it soldered in both sides and you're about to watch the mistake that I just made. This side, which is your A side, I just shortened the wires to, thinking that it was the close side. So now I've got to break it apart and resolder it. So instead of resoldering, I put a band aid on it and I spliced the wire and uh, just added more wire to it. But now we're going to put it back together. 
Make sure your wires are all tucked in there and out of the way. And now let's see. Jump stick, thumb stick works. D-pad's good. Middles. Buttons. Yeah. And. And now you can see as I'm holding my controller, I don't press in on them. I like to press down on them. And you can hear that it's clicking and making uh, contact, so it's working. Next step is to turn on your Xbox. Make sure that both of these work, and that both of these work. All right, so just to check, to test that controller, I just plugged it in, and instead of worrying about batteries right now. But we're going to check out our front, which is A and B. Those both work. And if you remember, our left side is our A. A. B. It all works. That's a good sign right there. Um, I'll do another video at a later time to show you how to repair it in case you did break that graphite connection, the contact pad, on the inside of a circuit board. Um, leave your comments, requests, sub. I'll, I'll check out yours too if you uh, send a link to your YouTube. His Pet Monkey and Scony Life. Catch you later, YouTube.